Hello everybody, welcome. We're going to walk you through an example of uh, finding the return to asset funders and to the return of equity for both the levered and all equity firms. So uh, you may be going over some chapters right now and understanding the impacts that leverage have or debt has on the amplification of returns to equity holders. And that's what I'm going to try to show you here on Excel today. So here we have uh, some givens for our example today. Okay, so we have the operating income of a levered firm and an all equity firm. Again, these are $8.5 million respectively. Like these are going to be held constant to see what the amplifications of returns are going to be uh, of debt to uh, to the levered firm. We have uh, a firm with uh, $20 million of assets. And so in the all equity firm here, you're going to see equity equals $20 million. So this is the equity in our, in our all equity firm. This says, you know, really, hey, all of our firm is financed with complete equity. We have zero debt, okay, uh, for this firm itself. As opposed to the levered firm here, we have $19 million of, uh, of our assets financed with debt and only a million dollars of our, of our assets financed with equity, okay? So this is the different structure of a levered firm again. Mostly with debt here, we're only $1 million of equity versus our all equity room, zero dollars of debt, twenty million dollars of equity. The second constant we have for for these uh, these two different uh, capital structures, we have an eight percent interest rate on debt for the levered firm and eight percent interest rate for the all equity firm. We'll make a comment about this at the end. We'll have to take this as a, as an assumption right now. It may not be totally realistic, but it, for the illustration purposes, we're going to go through. We're going to assume an eight percent interest rate on debt. Tax rate is 21%, the U.S. Uh, flat tax rate uh, after 2018. So will this work with the 21% tax rate? So the question here is going to say, well, calculate the return to asset funders of a levered and unlevered firm. So let's start down here. Okay. So it says, well, what's the operating income? Well, the operating income is going to equal our operating income that was given to us. And this is going to be the same for both firms. Okay, so we could just drag this across here. This is just taking in the $8.5 million from the all equity firm. What's the interest on debt? Well, we have $19 million in debt in, uh, in our levered firm. So this is going to be multiplied by the interest rate here at 8%. They're going to pay just over $1.5 million in interest. Our all equity firm, well, we already know it's going to be zero. We, we don't have any uh, interest on our debt. We take this uh, zero our amount of debt multiplied by percent that it's going to be zero we don't pay any interest because we have no debt okay uh, taxable income right this is just going to be the 8.5 million minus okay the interest on our debt this is going to have a taxable income over a levered firm of just shy of seven million dollars and this again we'll just follow this procedure again minus uh, the interest on our debt we know this is zero this is going to be the same right so we're going to pay tax on the full 8.5 million dollars in an all equity firm as opposed to our levered firm we're only going to be paying taxes on 6.98 million dollars of that so if we do that and we want to calculate what the taxes are going to be we take that almost seven million dollars multiplied by this 21 percent rate okay we're going to pay just shy of 1.5 million dollars uh, in our levered firm Versus we're going to pay a little bit of higher taxes in our, in our all equity firm, right? We have no interest here to shield any of our operating income from taxes. Okay, so we're going to pay on this full eight and a half million dollars. Hey, this is zero here. We're not going to get any benefit of shielding any of this income uh, from taxes. So we're going to pay more in taxes than the levered firm who, who can use some of this interest that is, is using this interest to shield some of uh, the operating income from taxes here. So the after-tax income, simply just the taxable income minus uh, your taxes here, enter, okay, so our after-tax income in the, in the lever firm, just over 5.5 million, and we're just gonna drag this over here. And again, this is gonna be this 8.5 minus this 7.1.785 million dollars. And you can see the after-tax income is a little bit higher Okay, for the all equity firm. Now, why is it higher? Well, because look, it we don't have any uh, interest here, so we're going to have a higher component within there. So, this is uh, some of the inputs that we need uh, to get down to the last couple of calculations we have. The first one is any cash flow available to all investors. Well, the firm can have two distinct types of investors. They can have bond holders and they can have equity holders. So if this is cash flow available to all investors. Well, this is going to equal interest that's paid to bond holders plus our after-tax income, right? So this after-tax income is net income 
this is going to be available to equity holders okay after we have made our obligations or payments to uh the debt holders so those two together are going to equal the total cash flow to all investors bond holders and equity holders so we have just over seven million dollars available uh in the levered firm and this is going to be the same right so this is going to equal uh, cash flow that goes to debt holders hey guess what it's going to be zero we don't have any debt okay plus the after-tax uh income which is our net income that's going to be available to equity holders so you can see here um similar component close seven million uh, just over seven million here just under uh seven million here and most of that difference is going to come from the shield that we have uh of paying tax okay so you can see we paid uh, taxable income here uh, or, or tax of 1.465 tax here of 1.78 the difference between here okay is that tax shield uh, that uh, the levered firm was able to uh, to utilize uh, and, and keep some of that cash flow away from the government's hands and into the investors hands now if we get want to get down here to the return uh, to all asset funders in the return on equity Okay. Well, simply we're going to take the after-tax income, so this is net income of the firm, divided by, uh, and this is going to be divided by all asset funders. So this is going to be a combination between debt holders plus the equity holders. So these are all asset funders. So we put that in as the denominator. We hit enter. You can see the return to all asset funders is going to be 20% in the levered firm. Same thing in the equity firm, we're going to take this after-tax income divided by the combination of both equity holders plus uh, the, funding, or the funding from debt holders. We know that's zero, we hit enter. We're going to see here that the return on all, up to all asset funders is a bit higher in the all equity firm. Now, let's see if this holds true when we just talk about the return on equity or the return to equity holders. So if we try to calculate the return on equity, or OE, again, we take net income, okay, or after-tax income, divided by our equity component here. Our equity component is only a million dollars. So if we hit enter here, look what happens. Our return on equity is 551%. This is fantastic. Okay, we see this 551%. Let's see what the return to equity holders is going to be in the all equity firm. Again, we take this after tax income divided by the total amount of equity. Again, $20 million in this case. Hey, what do you notice here? These two guys are going to be the same. Why? Because the only asset funders we have are equity holders. So these two guys are the same. But the big point here, and what we're going to look at in a second, is that the return on equity is amplified substantially by including leverage, okay, or by using debt in the capital structure of the firm. So let's look at this in uh, more of a graphical format here, okay. So we're just going to put debt up here, okay. And over here we're going to say, well, this is going to equal our return on equity, okay. And we're going to look at the various different capital structures. So we're going to go from a, a, a firm that uses $500,000 of debt all the way up to a firm that uses uh, 20000 or $19,500,000 in debt. So let's put 500000 in first. Okay, so this is going to equal 500000 plus this guy here. Okay, we hit enter. Okay, and we're just going to... We're just going to carry this all the way down, okay, and we get to 16 and a half million. Let's keep on going here all the way to $19 million in debt, okay, and let's format all these guys here into dollar figures. We'll lose a couple uh, decimal places. So here's debt, right? So in this case, this would say how much is, uh, uh, what's the return on equity going to be for a, 500, a firm that finances itself with $500,000 of debt? Down here, what's the return on equity for a firm that has, is using $10 million of debt and all the way down to $19 million. So if we go over here, we're going to hit, this is going to equal, we have to put this uh, number in the box here, okay? So we, we just adjacent to the debt, okay? We're going to say that equals 551. And then we're going to highlight this whole enchilada here. So we highlight the whole box, including debt in the 551%. Okay, we're going to go up here to data. 
we're going to go to what if analysis and we're going to go to data table. So now we're in the data table. Okay, it's going to ask you for a couple uh, inputs here. It's going to ask you row input and column input. Well, we're using a column input here and we're going to come down here. And since we're going to try to vary the debt level of this firm, we're going to come over here to the debt in, in uh, cell D, sorry, in the cell D6. Okay, we're going to click on that and we're going to, we, this is what we want to vary, right? We want to vary the debt level of the firm. So we hit OK there, and all of a sudden you're going to see a bunch of different numbers populate within here. I'm going to come back over here, and instead of using seeing this in decimal format, okay, I'm going to come back over, and I'm going to put this in a percentage format, and we'll see what, what happens when the firm uses more leverage. What do you notice here? As the firm starts to go from $500,000 of debt to $10,000 in debt, 15, 15, sorry, 15 million dollars of that as you see this go higher and higher and higher you see the return on equity go higher and higher and higher if we correspond at that level of a 19 million dollars this levered firm if we go back over here 19 million dollars what do you notice here the return on equity equals 551 percent the same thing that we had calculated before a firm that only uses five hundred thousand dollars of debt its return on equity is 34%, pretty close to the return on equity of our unlevered firm or all equity firm. So last thing we'll do, just to see this in, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a maybe a little better picture here, we're going to go back over here and we're going to insert uh, a chart, right? So we'll just go to recommended charts. They're going to probably recommend a scatter plot. We can just click on that. And this is going to show us, right? It's going to show us, hey, as the firm becomes more levered, right? So here's the different amounts of levered or debt on the bottom. As the firm becomes more levered, we can see the amplification of returns to equity holders gets quite significant, okay? And as we get really over this 17, 18 million dollars, you can see that this jumps up quite significantly, okay? And so this shows you graphically uh, the amplification of returns uh, to equity holders with increased leverage um, to the firm. Now, one quick thing before uh, we sign off here is this component. I told you guys we'd come back to this. We assumed that the interest rate on debt was going to be 8%. This may not be so realistic. As the firm becomes more levered here, right? We get a firm that's financed with 90% uh, or 95% debt. We know that this is probably going to create more risk for the firm. And so, you know, investors that are willing to provide them with this uh, debt are probably going to require a rate of return on this debt that might exceed that of 8% or what would be equivalent to the risk uh, to an all equity firm. So we use this as an assumption here. Just take this with a little bit of a grain of salt. Again, this is just showing you an example that the amplification of, uh, of uh, the return on equity of a levered firm. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.